I'm usually brought on places either as the comic relief or everybody's holding their breath in the back going, oh my God, what's he going to say? <laughs> so I'll try and give you a little of each. Uh, <laughs> in uh, around December of 2008, uh, I was given an opportunity to come up with something I thought was kind of cool. And that was uh, an effort, in a way, at conservation, uh, saving great journalism and a few trees along the way. Uh, and this happened uh, as my experience has been over 60 plus years. Uh, of how really cool things seem to happen. And it took place at, uh, at the time when the newspapers around here were laying people off. And in particular, uh, the East Valley Tribune uh, laid off a hundred and a gazillion people, including some of the top political reporters in the state. And one of them came to me, because uh, I run another company that does political work and all those kinds of things. Uh, really asking about a PR job, did I have anything for him? And I said, are you crazy? You really want to give up reporting to do PR? No offense to any PR people, by the way. <laughs> and he said, well, what can I do? And I said, well, you know, I've had this idea kicking around the back of my head for a little while. Uh, let's talk about it. And like most great things, at least in my life, this is what came out of it. It was an idea that basically all we really need are the reporters now. So we were both pretty pleased that over a breakfast we came up with this great idea. And then what we did is he took it back to a bunch of his people. And the next thing I know, there are five of us and we're starting a new publication. And the very first thing we were hit with was what everybody we talked to, especially those who've been in the newspaper business for any length of time, we would come back with, what's your model? And we were going, what? What model? What are you talking about? And if you, uh, if you were to like talk to them at any length, <laughs> this is what their model was. Do it their way. And so we were sitting there going, well, you know, a lot of people have been doing it your way for a really long time, and they're now going belly up, which is why these guys are out of work. So we said, you know, we've got to find a different model. And so we, we pondered on it for oh, a couple days, and then it came to us on a television rerun that there was, in fact, another model that could be followed. And I, many of you may be familiar with it. It's really not publicized in this way, but it's the Costanza model. <laughs> the Costanza model for the, hey, I got two advanced degrees, let me be. <laughs> for those of you who are not familiar with the Costanza model, it's very, very simple. It posits that if every instinct you have is wrong, if you were to do the opposite of that, everything would be right. And so we looked at what was going on with newspapers and what had happened. And it took us back to that napkin where the, the problem was they weren't having any fun. It had really become a business. Not just a business, but a big business. And the business was so far removed from what it was doing, it was unsustainable. So we took a new approach. Now, I was the oldest one in the group. And when I said, well, you know, we got to take a uh, Judy Garland and uh, Mickey Rooney approach, they kind of stared at me for a while. <laughs> and I then explained to them that really what that meant was we got to have fun with it. We can't just do it for the money. And if we have fun and do it right, the money will come. Which is something my parents told me when I was about five or six, and I didn't believe them then. But it's proven to be true. It's just a remarkable thing. So what we did 
was we gathered together to put on a news publication, much like you would put on a show, with costumes and uh, props and everything else. Because as we look back on newspapers, a lot of it was that, and a lot of it still is that. That was our first meeting. So we had our first meeting. We did all the paperwork you're supposed to do to be legal. We got ourselves a tax ID number. Big stuff. And then we focused in on, well, what are we going to do? Well, all of us were very interested in politics. We are all convinced that this state, in particular, uh, and it's before, this is two years ago, <laughs> before the most recent events, we were all convinced that this state never has had ongoing, consistent, hard-nosed political journalism like people experience in other states, principally where they came from. And that if that happened here, things might change. Although I am not taking responsibility <laughs> for the recent changes. This slogan, by the way, uh, is, is mounted in the press rooms of virtually every state capital in the country. And every reporter who covers politics at the state capital level knows this. And every once in a while it's going, oh yeah, that's what they're up to. So we had a direction. We had to have the accoutrements. And so we made up press passes. And if anybody can tell me, by the way, what that uh, barcode means, it would be very helpful. We just stole it from the internet and pasted it on because it made it look good. But we had to have a lot of stuff. So we had a name. We got a logo. Did you ever see those uh, ads on the net for you know, $200 for a logo? That's where we got it from. Because we had no money. But we had enough to get a server, a bunch of laptops. And by the way, Steve Jobs is not getting a cut of this. That's just the stuff that everybody wanted. And so we had all of this stuff. And then we had to go down to the Arizona State Capitol and just get a little space in the press room, uh, something like that. And so they, the staff went down there. They did all the things. They, know, they had been out of that business for like two weeks. And it's like eh, they left uh, one desk, and they're coming back to another. And it was like, OK, you're, oh, guys, you guys are back. It was like they were back from vacation or something. So. That worked out pretty well, and we issued our first online publication on January 6th of 2009, and blew the socks off of a whole lot of folks, especially the political insiders who were expecting, I don't know what they were expecting, but we just did it and told people about it because we didn't have any money for marketing. I'm very fond of, of this, this uh, statement from Professor Einstein. And I'd like you to meet our difficulty. <laughs> now, Senator Burns, fine gentleman, uh, really had a different view about the Senate press room. He wanted it basically destroyed, let alone having yet another news organization in there. So he let us go a good long time and if you've never been to the Capitol Press Room, actually, it doesn't exist this way anymore, but that's what it looked like. Uh, they found things in there that are unspeakable, <laughs> left over from you know, the founding of the statehood or whatever. But this was our first Capitol Bureau. And we were all pleased with it because we were doing all kinds of cool stuff. But Senator Burns didn't think so. So he ejected us and sent us this letter, immediately vacate the Senate press room, and we were going, oh, what's the big deal? It's a desk. That desk has, had been sitting empty. No one had used it for at least 15 years that anybody could remember. And they had gone through all the right things to go to the Senate president's office, write him a check, go here, okay, we're going to rent it like everybody else rents. 
And they didn't like that. They wanted us out of there. So we sent them back a letter. Uh, and we made up letterhead. That's the first piece of letterhead we ever had. <laughs> and basically said we wanted to be treated the same as our colleagues, the other press. Now, there's a little wrinkle in this, is that up until that point, Burns thought we were a blog. No offense to bloggers. But we did have to make the point to him that, no, 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 this is different. This is journalism. These are reporters. We follow those rules. And at some point, we hope to make a living off of this. And we cut him a check, yet another check, for about $2,500. He didn't like that either. So we did what I think anybody would do. Well, what some people would do. I think some people would just go, oh, OK, sorry, and go away. That's not in our makeup. So we kind of saw the opportunity. And the opportunity was to make it a big deal. <laughs> so the day after we were summarily kicked out with <laughs> armed guards and the whole thing, uh, we started a series, The Senate versus the Press, uh, on the front page of The Guardian. And uh, it's amazing what happens when one element of the press is attacked, if we're lucky. The rest of them jumped in and go, well, that's wrong. They shouldn't be doing it. Even the Republic was going, well, we know these people. This is wrong. So our folks were getting on TV and radio, and it was a big, it was a big deal. And we were pretty convinced that as a result of that, at the time, that the Senate president would go, oh, sorry, I was wrong, you know, and we would be let back in. Now, uh, not exactly. Uh, we were kicked out. And initially, it was like, oh my God, what are we going to do now? And so our reporters were really, they were working on the floor in the hallways. Fortunately, we had the laptops and the cell phones, so they could work anywhere. And they were kind of getting the hang of it. Although I have to tell you, many of them were complaining about their tushies hurting from sitting in the hallway. And then, not more than five days after that, some folks who own a building very close by the Capitol said, well, we got room. And we're, you're kidding. Ah, here. You can use this room, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks a month. You get telephone, you get this, you get air conditioning, you, you know, we'll, we'll do everything. And you want desks? We have desks. In my family, that's called take the deal and keep your mouth shut, which is what we did. And as it turns out, it was great timing because immediately after that, one of our colleagues and partners, Paul Giblin, won the Pulitzer Prize. Not for anything he did for and in the Arizona Guardian, but for his previous work at the Tribune. So at least this part of the story worked out great. <laughs> because, of course, my daughter, who was working with us, said, well, we got to have a party. And then she catered it, and it worked out very well. Now, what I was watching was that during this whole affair, Guardian readership online was going through the roof. We had not spent one dime on marketing, not even a Facebook ad, because I didn't figure out how to do those until a little later. <laughs> and then, of course, now that we were like a full-fledged business, you know, ready to take off and people knew about us, then we were being asked, well, what's your marketing model? marketing model? What's with all these models, for heaven's sake? So we did what you might have done. We Googled marketing model. <laughs> That's what we saw. We have a collection of advanced degrees, friends. None of us could figure out this nonsense. And it's not Costanza that we went back to. We took it to the street, because we thought there'd be a better model. Give it a moment. <laughs> you give it away for free. You get them hooked. 
you start charging. <laughs> we gave the Guardian away for free. There was, you could click on anything, go anywhere, and we let that go for uh, six weeks or so, maybe seven, two months, something like that. On the day that we, we said, okay, folks, really, we have to make a living off of this, our readership dropped and came right back up. So we were pretty pleased about that. We now had a revenue stream. Uh, we didn't have to deal with you know, the Senate press room anymore, which allowed us to do what we were intending to do from the, at the beginning, and that's look at the journalism. And so we were doing everything we could think of on the spur of the moment. Somebody said, hey, I heard about Twitter. And then we go, okay, what's Twitter? And then we go, oh, let's open up a Twitter account. We didn't have time for planning. We didn't have time to, to let all of the institutional kind of stuff take hold of us. We were putting on a news show. And in that first six months of operation, whatever we did was enough to win a national award from the National Association of, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Capital Reporters and Editors of other people who cover state capitals. So we thought that, nah, don't bother. Uh, we thought that was really cool. But we kept going back to the reason we're here is to do the journalism. So that stuff like this doesn't really happen. It almost did. I mean, think about it. A an actual nominated candidate for the United States Senate said this. I don't know how many others didn't say it, but thought it. And as journalists, that's what they're experiencing all the time, uh, a, a way of, of just pushing reality away so that only their view of things can come out or only what they want to say comes out. So the big idea I've come to share with you uh, is stolen from uh, uh, the Godfather movie, Lose the Paper keep the reporters. And then the only thing I'd add is, and be independent. <laughs>